this video, I'm going to show you how to use FCS Express to analyze multiple unmixed FCS files from our 16-color demo kit generated on the SciTech Aurora. After watching this video, you'll know how to do the following with FCS Express 7. Import Aurora FCS files, create a gating strategy, batch process the data into a PowerPoint presentation, batch export statistics into Excel, and check gate positions during the batch processing. Next, I'm going to show you an overview of all the markers that are present in this 16-color demo panel. The panel is for human PBMCs and has markers for many subsets, such as monocytes, T-cells, B-cells, NK-cells, and others shown here. Now that you've got an overview of the panel, let's start looking at the data. I've got my six FCS files here on my desktop. Then in FCS Express, I click the New Layout button to start my new project. After the new layout opens, go to the Data tab and click Data List. The Data List window opens. I'm going to move it off to the side and drag and drop my FCS files into the Data List. You can drag and drop them one at a time, or you can multi-select the files and drag them all in at once. Now, if you want to change the order of the files in the Data List, you can either click and drag the file up and down in the list to move it, or there's these up and down arrows at the top of the data list menu, and you can use those to move the file up and down. To start creating our analysis layout, click and drag the first file in the data list into the empty layout. Click OK to create a plot in the layout. If you want to change the plot type, make sure the plot is selected, then go to the Format tab and click the Change Plot Type button. I'm going to change this plot to a density plot. The layout by default is in portrait orientation. If you want to change it, go to the design tab, click orientation, and select landscape. To see all the formatting options for the plot, right click on it and select format. You can see there are many plot elements you can customize from the drop down menu in this formatting window. I'm going to start by changing my plot title in the Title drop-down menu. I'm going to delete all the current title text from this text box and instead add a keyword as my plot title by clicking Insert Token and selecting Keyword from Data. In the Create Keyword window, click the dot 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 button, then scroll through the list to find the file name keyword, select it, click OK, and click OK again. Now I can see the file name in the plot title. I also want to add the name of the gate to the title, so I'll click Insert Token again and select Current Gate. Now the gate name appears in the plot title as well. I don't like the border around the plot title, so I'm going to uncheck the box next to Background Border Visible to eliminate it. The plot itself also has a border, which you can see by clicking next to the plot in the empty space. Now you see the red border. To eliminate this, click the plot Select Borderline from the drop-down menu in the Formatting window, and in the Style drop-down menu, click No Line. I want this first plot to be a scatter plot, so I'll right-click on the X-axis label, and I'll change it to Forward Scatter Area, and right-click on the Y-axis label, and change it to Side Scatter Area. Next, I want to create a gate, so I right-click on the plot, select Create Gate, and select Polygon. Then I click to place gate edges as I trace around the cells I want in my gate, and click to close it. I'll call this gate Cells, and click OK. To create a new plot displaying only the events in the cells gate, I can click and drag the cells gate to an empty space in the layout. I want my next plot to be CD3 versus CD19, so I change the x-axis by right-clicking on it and searching for CD3 Alexafluor 532. Next, I'll change the y-axis to CD19, BB510. I'm not happy with the scaling of the data as it's very squished and there is a lot of white space on the plot. To change the scaling, go to the Formatting window, choose Axes from the drop-down list. For the y-axis under Scale, uncheck the box next to Automatic. Then under Below Zero Parameter, change the selection to use a value I specify. 
If I increase it all the way to 5,000, the visualization of my events already looks better. I'll do the same for the x-axis. Uncheck the automatic box, select the use the value box, and increase it to 5,000. If you don't like your changes, you can always use the undo button to revert to your starting point, and use the redo button to return to where we left off. If I want to further improve the scaling, I can right click on my plot and click magnify axis. Then I click and drag the region of the plot that I want to magnify, like so. Now I'm ready to add my next gate, so I right click on the plot, create gate, and click polygon. I'm going to draw this gate around the CD3 positive and 19 negative events, and click to close. I'll name this one CD3, and if you want to change the gate color here, go ahead and do so. I can relocate the gate name by clicking and dragging it around on the plot. Now I'm going to do my CD19 gate, same procedure. I'll name this gate CD19, and again, change the gate color if you'd like to, and click OK. I want to relocate the gate titles on the plot, so I'm going to click and drag them around to where I want them to be. My next plot is off the CD3 positive events, so I'm going to click and drag that gate to a blank space in the layout. For this one, I want my y-axis to be TCR gamma delta. Then I want to adjust the scaling for this plot, so I'm going to right-click on the plot and click Unmagnify. The magnification carried over from the previous plot to this new plot because I clicked and dragged the gate from the magnified plot to this one. Now I can clearly see my TCR gamma delta T-cells. I'm going to create two more gates. Again, I'm going to right-click on the plot, select Create Gate, and click Rectangle. I'll name this first gate TCR Gamma Delta and choose a gate color and click OK. Then I'm going to do this one more time to put a rectangle gate on the TCR Gamma Delta negative events. Okay, you can click and drag the gates and the gate names around so you can see the events on the plots more easily. Next, I'm going to make a new plot off of the TCR Gamma Delta negative events, so I'm going to click and drag to an empty space from that gate onto the layout. For this plot, I want to show CD4 on the x-axis and CD8 on the y-axis, so I'm going to go ahead and change those using again my type to filter trick to narrow down the list of options I can choose from for each axis. Okay, now I've got my CD4 versus CD8 plot. I'm going to adjust the scaling in the formatting window by changing the below zero parameter, this time to 10,000. There we go for the Y axis. And let's do the same for the X axis. Okay. Now I want to create another two rectangle gates, so again, right-click on the plot, click Create Gate, choose Rectangle, and draw the gate. This first one I'm going to call CD4, choose a gate color, and click OK. I'm going to move the CD4 gate label out of the way, and then create one more rectangle gate on the CD8 positive events. I'll name this one CD8 change my gate color, click OK, and I'm going to relocate the title of this gate too. If I want to display the gating hierarchy, I can go to the Insert tab, click Gate View, and click in an empty space on the layout. The layout I've created is for the first file in my data list. To see how everything looks for the other five files in my list, I can toggle through each of them. There is no need to make gate adjustments at this time, as you can do this during the batch processing. To set up the batch processing, go to the Batch tab and click Options. Then check the box next to Unconditionally Pause Between Iterations. This will pause the batch processing after each file is processed, so you can adjust gates before proceeding to the next file in the list. Click OK. Next, click the Batch Actions button. 
First, I'm going to create a PowerPoint output file by clicking Save to PowerPoint under the Add Action menu. In the window that opens, I'm going to check the box next to Open Presentation after saving so the PowerPoint file will open once the batch analysis is complete. I also want to specify where to save my file, so I'm going to click on this folder icon under Save to a new file. I'm going to save my file in the same folder as my FCS files, and I'll give it the name PowerPoint. Click Save, and then click OK, and you can see the Export to PowerPoint batch action appeared in my list. Next, I want to click Export to Excel column mode. Again, click the folder icon under Save to New File, set your directory, and enter your file name. I'll type this one as Excel. Click Save, click OK, and now you can see that action has been added to the list too. Now I need to define the information I want in that Excel file output. To start, I'm going to click and drag my scatter plot to the Excel column mode batch action item. In the window that appears, I click Keyword Token, then OK, then click the dot dot dot, click the Name column to sort the keywords by name, and then I'll scroll down to find the file name keyword, which for this first file is going to be Kitch1. Once I've located it, select it, click OK, and click OK again. Now I want to add some population percentages to the Excel file, starting with percent %CD3, so I click and drag the CD3 gate to the Excel column mode item in the batch actions list. I need to select my statistic as percent of gated cells and click OK. I'm going to repeat this for my CD19 positive gate, again choosing percent of gated cells for CD19 and click OK. I've got four more gates I'd like to add to my Excel file output, so I'm going to keep repeating that procedure of clicking on the gate, dragging it to the Excel column mode item, choosing the statistic I want, and saving it. You can do this for as many gates and statistics as you'd like in your Excel file output. For this example, I'm keeping things simple and only adding one statistic export from each of my gates in my layout. OK. Before starting the batch process, make sure you are happy with the gate locations for the first file, because you don't get to reposition the gates for the first file in your data list, only for the subsequent ones. Also. Make sure iteration 1 is selected in the data list to ensure that your batch process starts at the top of the list. If a different iteration is selected, like iteration 2, the batch process will begin at 2 and run through 6. Next, I'll click the Run button to begin the batch analysis. In the window that appears, click Yes. Once the first file is processed, You'll notice in the data list that now the second file is highlighted in blue and its data is displayed in the layout. While the batch is paused, I can reposition my gates, starting with my cells gate, to include the cells that I want inside of it. If you get a performance options pop-up like this one, go ahead and click Disable Immediate Updating on this layout to give your computer's processor a break. I'm going to reposition a few more gates, and then when I'm happy with the rest of them, I'll click Continue to move to the next file. I'm going to keep stepping through each of my files, checking the gate placements and adjusting them if needed, and clicking Continue to move through to the next file until I've gotten through all of them. So for this one, my cells gate is a little off, I'm going to tweak that a bit. The rest look good, so let's go to the next file. Again, here my scatter gate needs some adjustment for this file as well. And I'll click Continue. And for my last file, again, adjust the scatter gate. Okay, that looks better. And I'm going to tweak the CD3 gate a little. Maybe the TCR Gamma Delta gates a little. OK, and then I'll click Continue. When the batch process is complete, both files will open automatically. In the PowerPoint file, the gated data from each file is shown on its own slide. You can resize and move the plots around anywhere you'd like on your PowerPoint slides. 
You can also do this for the population hierarchy. You can resize it and move it anywhere you'd like for your presentation. In the Excel file, you can see a column was generated for the file name keyword and each of the statistics I specified with data from each of my six FCS files across the rows. Now let's close these files and save our work in FCS Express. Okay, first go to the File tab and click Save As. Set the Save As Type option to layout files with linked data and type in a name for the file. Here I'll call this one Analyzed. Then click Save. If I reopen the FCS Express layout file later, it will remember the path lengths to each of my six FCS files and reload them with the layout. I'm also going to save it without the links, so again go to File, Save As, enter a file name, this one I'll call Template, and for Save As Type, select Layout Files with Unlinked Data, and click Save. Now I'm going to close my FCS Express file and go to my folder with all my data. I can open the layout file with unlinked data, which I called template. Once it opens, let's take a look at the data list. You can see that my data list is empty and there's no files linked to it. To use this template and add files, I simply drag and drop data files into the data list. Then, double click on the data file and make sure in the window that appears that the option is set to change base overlay on all objects to selected file and click OK. Now I can see all the data in the file and I can adjust the gates as needed. Next, I need to go to the batch actions list and change the file names and file saving paths. I'll open the PowerPoint file in my actions list. Then at the bottom, click the folder icon again so that we can set where we want to save the file and give the file a name. For this one, I'm going to call it PowerPoint 2. Click Save and click OK to close out of this. Then I'll open the Excel item in my batch actions list, click the folder to the right of Save to a new file, and give the file a name such as Excel 2. Click Save and click OK. Now my layout is all set to process any new files that I drag and drop into the data list.